So what you are seeing on the screen right now is actually Roblox and this effect isn't achieved through video editing or anything else of that sort. All of this is basically like I said happening on Roblox. But you are probably wondering how I managed to do this and so it's just going to be best if I will show it. So as usual leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and if you want to support me more you can do so through Patreon. But anyways let's get into the video. So what you saw was basically this except it was done on the player's camera. And what this exactly is is just a mesh with let's just say well few workarounds. But basically you can see that it has few effects. One of them is a distortion. Another one is this like grainy filter and there is some stuff happening to the contrast and color. But how is this effect basically achieved is actually very simple. But I'm basically just going to explain it step by step. So now this is just a basic sphere mesh with a smooth plastic material and none of the properties have been really changed. But let's first just talk about the distortion effect that's happening in here and this is achieved by changing the material of the sphere to glass. And this is not everything yet, because we also need to increase the transparency to anything above 1, like for example 2. Now we are going to have this. But now whenever I decide this sphere, the effect is going to disappear. And this is because we need to add a highlight instance, so it's just going to make the effect render. And this highlight instance can also be disabled. And I talked about this glass trick in one of my previous videos, which I'm going to leave down in the description, because it's actually really worth watching. But basically now we have well everything that we really need, which is just a sphere mesh with the glass material as well as a highlight instance. Now I'm just going to show this filter example at first and then just move to few different other stuff. But if I just go to the highlight and enable it, you can see that it kind of has an overlay on the material. And we can also change the transparency of the fill color, as well as the outline transparency as well, but I'm just going to leave it black. Now the thing about the field transparency is that it also behaves the same as the glass material, meaning that it basically just breaks if you increase it to anything above 1, for example like 2, or even 3, 4, 5 and so on. Where if I leave it at 2, it's just going to have this really saturated overlay. Oh and I also need to mention that the sphere needs to be double sided. But yeah, you can see that we already have this effect, except it's not really the same as this one. And that's because if I keep increasing the field transparency, the only thing this is going to do is just going to make it more saturated. And this also works very similarly to the reflectance, which I also made a video on. And now if the field transparency value is high and you basically just see a solid color, that is because of the field color property. If I were to make it darker, all of a sudden you can see a little bit more. And if I change it to the right value, we are going to have the grainy effect now, as well as the distortion saturation and so on. But now I can also decrease the field transparency to be something below 10, or maybe increase it to a very high number, where it's going to create this. And again I can just change the field color, to maybe something like this value. So now we basically just have this. And the thing about the field transparency being a positive number, is that if you change the field color, it's going to basically just reverse its value. If I make it red, it's going to be blue, but if I change the field to a negative number, the red color is still going to stay red. And this effect on the left was also achieved with the negative field color. But if I increase the value, on some colors we are going to be able to see a little bit more, and if it's really black, it's just going to be, well, a void. So let me just put it somewhere in the middle. Where now if I change the values, we are basically just going to have a little bit of a different effect. And I'm just going to mess around with these properties, where I can even make it like blue and red, or maybe even something like this, or have it around the same value that I showed the first example with. Except this one is a little bit more green. Now I'm just going to move it right here, and just quickly do a playtest. Because what's really fun about this effect is that since the highlight, if I go to the sphere model, its depth mode is set to be always on top. If I for example just add a part, and then scale it a little bit, it's kind of going to render the highlight through it. But if I move my character over it, it's going to have a really neat effect because of the color saturation and the hue variations. So I can for example just be walking like this and just have my character have this really nice effect. Also am I the only one who thinks like this could actually be done for a Jojo VFX? But well anyways. Now I can also add a highlight instance to my own character and basically do the same thing about increasing the field transparency. Where if it's set to like for example 2000, I should be able to change the color now. And yep, I actually can. And now my character is going to have this chromatic kind of cartoony effect, 
or even a stylized filter, which just seems to be pretty awesome. And now my character is going to be blue. But yeah, overall I recommend that you guys basically just play around with this, since this is pretty fun. Who needs post-processing effects when you can have, well, one highlight instance? But also I'm just going to change this to a really negative number, and just change this to for example something a bit darker. Where now it's going to have a little bit more, well, color variation. But yeah, now I'm just going to move to the next thing, and it's basically just going to be the same thing, except a little bit different. Because as you can see, now this object has some kind of a texture or shading. And that's because it has a PBR material. And since the highlight is set is just kind of an overlay, it's still just going to render all of these maps. And even if I remove the PBR material, and just change this one to for example wood, and just change the color of the sphere, you can see that this is still going to render the material itself. So I can make some pretty amazing stuff with this. And just to show you different materials and how they look, basically with the settings, I'm just going to go through all of them like this. But now well, let me just talk about how to apply these effects through the spheres onto the camera. Where I'm just going to delete this one and for example just apply this one. So we are going to be able to see well this. And applying this to the camera is as simple as just well setting the sphere C frame to be the same as the cameras. So I'm just going to add a script into the starter character scripts. And what the script is going to do is just here to make a reference to the run service. Then to the sphere and then to the camera. Then I'm just going to do run service that renders theft and connect a function. And inside of this function what I need to do is set the sphere C frame to be the same as the camera that C frame. So if I just do a playtest, it's going to stick to my camera and have this filtered effect right here. The server is still going to register that the sphere is right here, but on the client it's basically something like this. And just to show it a little bit better, it's actually just this. So just imagine that the sphere is basically just always going to be following the player's camera. And just for a note, this effect is basically not perfect, where this might also not work sometimes. For example, whenever you zoom out, you see that your character can just disappear for a second, as well as the graphics being on a lower quality. So now we basically just have this without the distortion effect, and same with mobile devices rendering highlights in a bit of a different way. But also, now that we have these filters, if I go to the highlight and the color, I am able to change it at runtime, so I can just do some pretty cool stuff with this. And well now I am just stuck in the void, except this guy is burning. And well I just feel like I am using a forbidden way of actually achieving post-processing effects or even filters on Roblox. But yeah, that's basically going to be everything for today, so again leave a like as well to support the channel, and you can also support me on Patreon. But yeah, thank you for watching, hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.